morning everyone. How is your day today? It's a great day to be alive. How are you feeling? Excellent. Well, we're going to start the day out like we usually do. Jaw's already staring me down and giving me all the looks of we better be going to the park or else. And uh, so we're going to. We're going to take him to the park and then I have a vlog planned. But I'm not sure if I'm able to get into that street to do it or not. So I have a backup vlog plan just in case. Hopefully we'll get to do the one that I want to do. But, you know, you always got a plan for the worst just in case. So let's hit the park, have some fun, and uh, go off and do some vlogging. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, unfortunately for Ja, guys, we have to make a change of plans. Yeah, so we had to derail the plan today. Um, I'll let you guys guess. A, I walked out and found a flat tire in my car. B, LA Marathon. Or C, uh, cataclysmic nuclear blast destroyed everything in the universe. Yeah, it was B. I went to map where we were going and uh, so it was gonna take five times as long to get there. I'm like, what's going on? LA Marathon, they have most of the main road shut down so we're gonna wait a few hours and go do that. So we'll just go for a neighborhood walk and then we'll head off to Park La Brea later. He's not gonna let it ruin his day though, are ya? He's a puppy, so he wants to play all of the time. <laughs> that is such a cool house, I love that. So this coming week of vlogs should be really great. If I do say so myself, I thought up about two weeks worth of ideas last night and uh, I'm gonna try and knock out as many as I can. Actually, most of this whole area is really great. And much like I said the other day, I did in fact buy a plane ticket for our next trip. Wow. Nice house. This flower pot these people are using right here, I swear it reminds me of Ed Gein's Cauldron when we saw it in the, uh, the Haunted Museum in Vegas. I do now. Take a look at this. This water stain almost makes it look like something's exploding out of his chest. All right, gang, I'm gonna head over to Trader Joe's and get us some groceries, but I wanted to fill you in on a little something because I had mentioned this um, a while ago, probably a few months ago in vlogs, and um, now it actually has happened or the time has come, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fill you in. So. I had mentioned to you, a lot of you that one of my big goals for vlogging, one of my dreams was always to uh, get to go to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown with my grandpa. He's never got to go see it, I've never got to go see it, and I figured if I was ever going to go, he's the only person I would want to go with. So um, throughout the years, I've just I've never been able to afford a trip like that, to go do anything like that, or to take him or anything like that, sadly. But um, this year, I had told him the last time I was home, I said, I would really like to do that trip with you. Um, now he's in his 90s now, and he can't do those kind of trips the way he used to. And I know that because I have asked him to do other trips and he said, I don't think I'm up for it. But I told him, I said, if you, if you would be up for it, I would like to pay to take you um, for your birthday. And yesterday was actually his birthday, and that's really why I did the Pistol Pete vlog. Um, something special for my grandpa and uh, I know he doesn't care for the fanfare or need it or anything so I don't want to make a huge deal but that was why I did it and um, and I had talked to him the other day and I said you know my offer still stands I still you know would like to take you to Cooperstown and um, and my sister had said when I told her that was kind of my plan was she said she wanted to go as well so he wrote me back and he said um, he said, well, the first excuse I'm going to give you is that I told you at Christmas, no more gifts. I don't want gifts anymore and that you're not to spend any money on me. So right there, I'm going to say that I'm going to have to say no because of that. And he said, and second, I just don't think I can handle that kind of a drive and things like that. But he said, I'd like for you and Tara to go. So that'll probably be the plan. That'll be um, my gift to my grandpa is that my sister and I will plan a trip and we will go to Cooperstown together and we will vlog it. Um, as much as they will let us vlog and he'll get a C at and that will be, you know, the next best thing to go in. And like he always jokingly says, I like watching you travel because you're doing all the walking and I don't have to and I get to see it through your eyes. So unfortunately, we're not going to be doing the trip with him, but we will hopefully do the trip soon. Guess they're just being prepared. 
cop cars and fire trucks. And pretty much empty streets. So a little tease for our upcoming trip is that in one of the locations we're going, we're gonna be doing a vlog on a famous author. And then in another place we're going, we're gonna be doing a filming location vlog. Which I know basically tells you nothing, but if you like those kind of vlogs, it gives you something to look forward to. But I will tell you this, the filming location vlog that we're gonna do is something I never thought I would ever get to do. It's one I've always wanted to do, and it's gonna be fun. Like, fun is the key word for that one. Huh, the hens. They get you some ham. Since we're no longer doing the tail waggers, let's try some of these dog treats. I just love the art here. Awesome. The new thing isn't the scooters, they're beyond the scooters. Now we've got the equivalent, except in bicycle form, the little motorized bikes. All right, we're heading over to the Park La Brea area. Here's the fountain right in the middle of Park La Brea. How's that grass feel on your belly, huh? We're here to do the vlog, and we're gonna get it do it, aren't we? Okay, gang, so today's vlog is on one of my all-time favorite rock stars, Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses. When I was a kid, Guns N' Roses was like one of those turning points in my life when I heard their music. I was like, this is the coolest thing I think I've ever heard. It was the first real band I ever got into that nobody in my family was already a fan of. You know, it was something that I discovered on my own and I got into. And this band was just rock and roll. And it was because of them that I ended up living out here in Los Angeles. I knew they were from here. And when I was a kid, I said, I want to go there too. Now this is a crazy story today because we're actually at one of the places that Axl Rose used to live in. Now there's two crazy stories to this place. One being kind of bad and one being rather good. So let's go take a look at the place and I'll tell you what happened here and why this is such an interesting place for me as far as being a Guns N' Roses fan and what happened here. Let's check it out. Right here is one of the high-rise buildings that Axl Rose used to live in. Now what's crazy about this is that if you remember back in 1990, if you were a fan of MTV the way most of us were, you know that Axl Rose was arrested in 1990 for apparently, or he was accused of, taking a wine bottle out of his female neighbor's hand in the hallway um, hitting her with the wine bottle and then taking her house keys and throwing them out off of his 12th floor balcony onto the ground. Now on the surface that sounds like a horrible story and now that the Motley Crue The Dirt movie has come out you'd almost believe anything you hear about that time period. But Axel actually went into detail about this and talked about it and here's what he said happened. Now according to Axl Rose, and I totally believe him in this, not just because I'm a GNR Axl Rose fanboy, but because if you um, have heard him talk about it, or if you saw the footage of him actually being released from jail from this, he has such a lighthearted, jovial attitude, um, almost a carefree attitude that you can just tell that he, at least in my opinion, he doesn't come off like a guilty man. But like I told you, she um, claimed that he hit her with a wine bottle, her own wine bottle, threw keys off the balcony. Now here's what he said happened. Um, when he was released from jail five hours later and uh, posted bond and everything, he actually said in front of cameras, he said, this has been something that's been ongoing with her for two years now. He said, I had uh, told my lawyers and managers this was, it was gonna come to this. She's just a lonely person who is trying to inject herself into my life and has been and, um, and it just came to a head this time. Now what he said has happened is he said, um, in the time that he's lived here, every time he has friends over and she knows, she tries to get herself invited in. And he said he's never um, let that happen. He says that she has a major drinking problem and says that throughout the time he's lived here that she goes out drinking at the local bars and then tells people that Axl Rose is her neighbor and invites them all back to party at her house or her apartment next door. And Axel says he knows this because he was getting phone calls from the club owner saying, hey, she was here again tonight and telling people who she, who she lives next door, so you're gonna have a lot of noise coming. So he said this particular night, his wife, Axel said, his wife Erin Everly, the week before had had a miscarriage and she was resting in the house and Axel's neighbor named Gabriella was once again doing her, 
her normal things that he said she was doing where she was being loud in the hallway and screaming and trying to get Axel's friend that was in there visiting to come out and he said this was like 1.30 she said it was 2.30 in her report um, but he decided to come out and told her to shut up and go inside and sleep it off and she started screaming at him and he said she started swinging a wine bottle at him and so he said he took the wine bottle out of her hands and when he did that she took the keys that she had to get into her apartment, threw them at him, and they went into his apartment. So he said, I just went back in my apartment, closed the door, and said, you're not going to need those, and threw her keys over the balcony out here onto the ground. Axel said he poured out her bottle of wine, and she proceeded to kick and claw and damage his front door and his doorbell. And he said during that 20-minute span, he... Uh, called down the building they said that she had been warned before about harassing him and said that he called down the building and that they the building had called the sheriff and they decided not to do anything and then he said she went downstairs and started raising a ruckus and they called the police on her and then when the police came they actually arrested Axel because she said that Axel had assaulted her inside this building now right now you may not know who to believe, you may not know who you think did this and you can just chalk it up to the crazy late 80s, early 90s behavior, but when it went to court, Axel won. Axel, it was, well not won, but it was actually dismissed because they had no proof, they said that they saw no signs that she had been assaulted or hit with a wine bottle. And there were previous complaints about her from Axel and other people in the building. So since it happened on the 12th floor, let's go look at the 12th floor. Now at the time, Axel actually had two addresses, and this is one that he was using mostly for business and things like that. So he had a lot of his um, office things and Guns N' Roses business stuff here. Now believe it or not, I actually have a friend that lives in this building. That's how I was able to do this. So it could have been any one of these. But it definitely would have happened on this floor. And if you look out this window, you can kind of get an idea of where those keys would have been chucked out of. So Axel had been accused of assault. Charges were dropped and he was apparently going after a civil suit against her. Now, like I said, there were actually two interesting stories attached to this apartment, and so that was the first one. The second one came that same year when Axel decided to give away this apartment via a contest through MTV. And the contest was actually called Evict Axel, and there was a whole one-minute promo video you can find online of Axel showing you around the place and saying that he's going to not only give away the place, but he's going to give away all the... Um, stereo and most of the furnishings um, to the person that wins it. Now surprisingly someone actually did win this contest. It was a, uh, a 21 year old girl um, at the time who was attending the University of Akron. Um, that's all I could find online was a little blurb about that and they said that they had asked her if she was going to take the place or what she was going to do with it and she said she hadn't really thought about it which I thought was really funny. So there you go. If you ever wondered where Axel Rose was living in, well, he lived here for at least two years because he said that he had warned his uh, lawyers and management that he was going to have a problem with this lady. Um, so lived here for a couple of years, and if you ever wanted to put a, uh, a visual to his story or the stories about the giveaway apartment or the infamous accusation of hitting his neighbor over the head with a wine bottle, this is where it happened. The top floor right here. And thank you for being so patient while I vlog that, Jaw. I've been coming through Park La Brea for, I don't know, probably 15 years since I had a delivery job. It's always been a real quiet, serene area. It's really, really shocking to know that Axl Rose at one point lived here. Especially like in the heyday of GNR. Wild man. And if you go track down that um, that one minute little promo of Axel giving away the apartment, now that you know 
the um, the false accusation that happened there of the wine bottle, you'll get the reference when he's saying, and the balcony is perfect for throwing keys, or he makes a reference to throwing the keys over the balcony, that's, that's what it's from. Park La Brea for the first time. Do you like it? You've never been here before, huh? That LA Marathon put the kibosh on your park trip today. Well, we've messed around enough here. I think we're gonna head out of here. What do you say, big guy? Well, we came home and had some mail. Thank you, Luann Russo, for sending us a Airbnb gift card through Amazon. We will definitely be using that in the future. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. I'm so glad that my friend was nice enough to let me come into her gated community and vlog that. I've wanted to do that one for a while, and today just happened to be the perfect day to do it. Hope I didn't create a problem with Axl Rose either. I'm a big fan, so. <laughs> I don't need any legal trouble after this. All right, gang, we're going to call it a night. I wanted to thank Michelle Cano, Pam Maddox, and Dave Stillwell for becoming my newest Patreons. And thank you all for watching. Like I said, I'm a big GNR fan. I like to show crazy stories, and since he's one that people think always was guilty of crazy stories, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show one that he was not guilty of. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you all later. Goodbye.